A very warm welcome to all our viewers and welcome to a new edition of Africa Today, our show bringing you all the latest news and events happening all around the African continent. My name is Angie Mehr and I'll be joining you for today's edition and as usual we'll begin straight away with a look at the news making the headlines where the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris on a week-long tour of Africa visited Panuka Farm in Zambia during her stop in the country. She reiterated the United States promise of seven billion U.S. dollars in private sector commitments to support climate resilience at adaptation and mitigation across the African continent. We have the details. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris on Saturday traveled to a farm outside Zambia's capital that's using new techniques and technology to boost its vegetable crop as she highlighted ways to secure food supplies in an age of global warming. She said the site is an example of what can be done around the world. Unlike in the United States, where conservations about climate change usually revolve around replacing fossil fuels with clean energy, the focus in Africa is on expanding access to food. Rising prices stemming from the Russian invasion of Ukraine have been damaging to poor countries, and global warming is expected to bring more challenges in the coming years. Analysts say hunger can also create instability, leading to migration and conflict. She is pushing for $7 billion in private sector investments, mostly to boost conservation and improve food production to help Africa prepare for the effects of climate change. Her announcement about that goal came as she wrapped up her week-long visit to Africa, which included earlier stops in Ghana and Tanzania. The trip was intended to advance U.S. efforts to make inroads in a part of the world where China's influence runs deep. It's the biggest ticket item that Harris has announced, but more work will be needed to follow through. And continuing with more news, Kenya's top prosecutor dropped charges against four lawmakers over anti-government protests. This came a day after the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, suspended the demonstrations. We have more details in this story. Kenya's opposition leader, Raila Odinga, said he was ready for talks with President William Ruto as long as authorities halted arrests connected to the protests and addressed his concerns about the rising cost of living and reforms to the electoral system. His lawyer said the case has been withdrawn for the sake of peace, dialogue and justice between the accused persons and the state. Thousands took part in three marches over the past two weeks against soaring prices and alleged fraud in last year's vote. All three turned violent and a fourth march had been planned for Monday. The four opposition lawmakers, who included the leaders of Odinga's faction in both houses of parliament, were arrested and charged with unlawful assembly in late March, then released on bail. Rutu said he had asked leaders of both houses of parliament to give priority to addressing all the issues the opposition had raised. The U.S. Embassy in Kenya and regional bloc, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, joined local leaders in welcoming the move to talks. Still with our news, prosecutors in Senegal who saw two years in prison for opposition leader Usamana Sanko have filed an appeal after he was given a much lighter two-month suspended sentence for his conviction on libel charges in a case his supporters say was politically motivated. We have more details in the story. In Senegal, the outcome of Thursday's verdict allows opposition leader Osman Sonko to run for president next year, though he still faces unrelated criminal charges in a pending case that would disqualify him if he is convicted. He was handed a two-month suspended sentence on liberal charges. Sonko is widely viewed as the top opposition candidate in Senegal's elections next year. His lawyer said Sanko has not yet decided whether to appeal the sentence in the libel case. Sanko was also ordered to pay about $330,000 to Tourism Minister Mami Mbaye Nyang, who accused the politician of defamation and public insult. Neither Sanko nor his lawyers were present when the verdict and sentence were delivered. Each of Sanko's previous court appearances led to protests in the streets of Dakar, the capital, and Sanko himself was forcibly removed from his vehicle by police on two occasions. Demonstrations have taken place not only in Dakar but in cities throughout the country. Sanko's supporters see the charges against him as the latest attempt to cut short his political career. 
Sonko finished third in Senegal's 2019 presidential election and has called on President Macky Sall to declare publicly that he won't seek a third term. The ruling party says Sall should be allowed to run after a constitutional change in 2016, made while Sall was president, which changed presidential terms to five years. Sonko also faces charges based on accusations from a female employee of a massage salon who said she was assaulted by him. If convicted, he faces up to 10 years in prison and would be barred from running for president. No date has been set yet for the trial. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest for this afternoon, Dr. Rauf Ghaffar, our political analyst. Dr. Rauf, a very good afternoon to you, sir. To you too, my dear. Thank you very much, doctor, for joining us. Now, let me start by asking you about U.S. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's visit uh, to Africa, where she just ramped up her visit with a stop in Zambia, uh, which was uh, witnessing a push for $7 billion U.S. billion in private sector investments to, of course, help Africa, especially in light of issues related to the effects of climate change. How do you see, uh, first and foremost, her visit to the African continent? Well, a long-awaited a long -awaited visit. I mean, uh, uh, the United States was supposed to be in Africa uh, long ago. Yes. But, uh, uh, I mean, better late than never. Um, the, the reasons behind the visit, of course, the declared reasons is to uh, try and appease uh, a little bit the effects of... Uh, 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 climate change, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, in the African continent, being the most uh, uh, vulnerable mm -hmm. as far as uh, the repercussions of climate change is concerned. So, yes. uh, uh, they, she visited the three countries, mm -hmm. uh, uh, each for a couple of days. Uh, uh, we are talking uh, 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 clean energy. We are talking. Uh, I mean, in general, uh, again. Uh, uh, the United States is looking for uh, uh, a part, an important part to play uh, in Africa, mm -hmm. particularly after the visits and the existence of a lot of uh, huge economic powers uh, in Africa as well. Yes, indeed. So do you see this as, uh, you know, the United States playing a bit of catch up with other, uh, you know, global powers like China or other European countries or Russia uh, that have, you know, come to Africa at an earlier stage and developed ties, whether in uh, infrastructure or services, etc.? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know, and of course, everybody in the world knows that uh, Africa is the future. Mm -hmm. uh, a young continent, as far as uh, uh, population is concerned, uh, average age uh, uh, young, so the prospects for a, a future exist. Uh, Africa, once again, is a very rich uh, continent as far as resources are concerned, I'm talking mineral resources, natural resources, even human resources. Mm -hmm. So these uh, constitute a very important uh, part of the development, <coughs> successful development of the country. Yes. They might leak, uh, lack, I'm sorry, uh, some uh, 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 finances, of course. Uh, uh, so uh, comes the economic powers uh, offering uh, partnerships, uh, offering investments, and offering uh, uh, what have you. Uh, try and, uh, uh, from one side, to uplift the continent and uh, present them with uh, uh, a better life in one side, but uh, making uh, good uh, deals and good business that would be beneficiary for the two sides, of course. Indeed. So, right. as you said, big powers were there already, mm -hmm. and it was about time for the United States to step in. Right. How do you weigh, uh, Dr. Raouf, uh, you know, the seven billion U.S. dollars announced? Uh, this is, of course, one of the biggest tickets, really, that Harris has announced during her trip to Africa. And uh, she focused on the issues related to the effects of climate change on the African continent. Well, the, the figure itself is, is very substantial. And uh, uh, I, I hope they keep uh, the, 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 the word uh, as far as this... Uh, a huge amount is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am sure uh, a big part of it will be directed to the effects of the global uh, of, of uh, climatic changes. But I'm, I'm sure part of it will go uh, into infrastructure projects, into helping out the economy to uh, get better. 
So I, I, I see the figure as uh, a, a big figure, and uh, if uh, they uh, fulfill their promise and uh, uh, pour these uh, kind of funds uh, within the, the continent, uh, then uh, it will have a very positive effect, of course, on uh, the countries uh, in particular and on the continent in general. Indeed. Doctor, how do you see, you know, the role that uh, developed nations have played with regards to the effects of climate change uh, on, you know, developing countries or less developed countries? And how, what role do you see the private sector playing in the fight against climate change for the more needier nations? Uh, first of all, there is, there is no government in the world that is mm. capable on its own to uh, work this thing out alone. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the private sector has to come in and has to play a major role. As a matter of fact, uh, our president, uh, uh, for instance, in Egypt is expecting the private sector to represent 75 percent of the development of the country. So mm -hmm. uh, it should uh, be percentage-wise uh, not exactly the same, but at least the uh, uh, private sector the NGOs have to play a major role in developing their own countries. Mm -hmm. They are the only ones that are everywhere. I mean, government can, even governments cannot reach uh, sometimes uh, parts of, of, of countries, but uh, the, the, the NGOs and the private sector can, and, and they complement each other. And of course, the, pri the private sector has to represent the major partner in the development of every country. Indeed. Now, Doctor, you know, Africa is one of the uh, major continents affected by issues related to climate change and the adverse effects of this phenomenon, yet it is uh, the least uh, contributing continent to this phenomenon. Why is this so, Doctor? Well, I mean, uh, we know that the climate changes and the pollution and whatever repercussions of uh, 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 this uh, come, uh, I mean, the, the reasons, I'm sorry, they come from industrial, let's say. They come from emissions. They come from uh, uh, industrialized uh, uh, countries, etc. They participate the most mm -hmm. uh, 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 in, in, in the change of, of climate. Uh, uh, Africa, uh, on the contrary, uh, does not. I mean, uh, they don't have sophisticated industries. They don't have high... Uh, emissions, uh, uh, so they participate uh, minimally, maybe, uh, uh, I, I can't even mention the percentage, but it is completely negligible. And uh, mind you, they are the uh, most suffering from exactly. the discussions. And uh, I think this is not, uh, this is a responsibility of uh, the industrialized world to, to come in and participate and try to uh, help uh, the effects in uh, 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 bettering the uh, economies everywhere and in uh, lessening the effect, uh, effects of the, the phenomena that they themselves caused. So this is at least what they can do uh, as a moral uh, and political responsibility. Indeed. Dr. Rauf, now uh, Kamala Harris had very interesting statements, one of which was uh, she said it was critically important that global leaders uh, speak the truth about the disparities that exist in terms of cause and effect and address, address uh, those disparities when it comes to ties with African nations. How do you see these statements by the American Vice President? Well, uh, I mean, disparities exist everywhere. And, uh, and uh, 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 instability uh, exists in a lot of African uh, countries, unfortunately. And uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good message. Uh, uh, again, uh, I repeat what our president said repeatedly, there is no development without security, security. and stability. And mm -hmm. this is something that has to be established. Uh, we know there are a lot of conflict uh, points and a lot of hot areas in Africa that needs to be tackled within the African Union itself or through international institutions or through big countries. And uh, uh, these things have to be uh, settled uh, and cleared before 
we can see any serious development in any country. But mm -hmm. again, within the country <coughs> itself, uh, the leaders uh, should not take part and should treat everybody equally uh, so that disparities uh, uh, begin to lessen and eventually disappear. This mm -hmm. is the only way for the growth and for the development. Mm -hmm. So, Doctor, as we've seen, you know, uh, when China has approached African countries, they're focused on issues related to uh, infrastructural developments, whether it's roads or, uh, you know, the infrastructure for the different countries uh, that they have gone to. The United States seems to be focusing on issues related to climate change and uh, renewable energy sources, clean energy. Uh, why do you see this being the focal point of the U.S. in Africa? Uh, I, I will say something that might not be appealing to a lot of people. I mean, China is straightforward. They are coming in Africa mm. for investment uh, to make Africa better and to benefit mm. from, as you said, they are starting with infrastructure because they can't invest unless uh, they have proper infrastructure uh, the, where they do. So. They had to start with this. They came and said, we are going to help you out with your infrastructure yes. so that when we invest, the environment is uh, uh, lucrative for our investments. Mm -hmm. uh, being late, in my humble opinion, being late, the United States ch ch chose another entrance uh, by uh, uh, starting with the uh, moral part and the ethical part. Mm. Uh, we want to... Uh, uh, help you uh, get rid or at least uh, Face minimize the, the effect mm. of the, the, the change of climate. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion as well, uh, the ultimate result is to invest and to make use of the riches and wealth that are existing in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Harris said in one of her comments that there are opportunities in clean energy that could generate growth in Africa. Uh, tell us a bit about how you see the energy economy uh, becoming more attractive in African countries uh, for other global powers to pay attention. Energy is one of the pillars of mm. infrastructure. Mm. I mean, if we're talking uh, roads, if we're talking, uh, we have to talk energy. Mm. Uh, and uh, and. Uh, uh, Egypt, uh, I mean, sorry, Africa is full of resources that can be the base of very clean energy. Yes. So to invest in, in, in this means that you are uplifting the infrastructure of the country and you are helping this country to develop. So you start by uh, improving the infrastructure and then comes the uh, essential part, which is uh, part in partnerships. Uh, investments, joint ventures, what have you, so that uh, everybody benefits, whether it is the country itself, of course, or the, uh, 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 the power that comes in with whatever help they give. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Rauf, let me ask you, what kind of challenges do you foresee when it comes to, you know, getting opportunities in the clean energy economy for African countries? What challenges do you think lie uh, in front of some of the African nations? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, instability. I mean, a mm -hmm. lot of countries are still uh, from the inside uh, unstable and uh, they need uh, stability and security. Mm. Uh, uh, the whole world is playing a role through the United Nations or the uh, African Union to try and uh, work out uh, a way to uh, uh, impose yes. uh, security and peace uh, in a lot of countries in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one challenge, uh, very, very important uh, as far as uh, the development is concerned. Uh, the second one is the, 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 the uh, uh, unfortunately, most of the African countries, they depend on uh, natural uh, resources mm -hmm. like rain, like, so if, if uh, God forbid, uh, there are extended mm. drought periods, drought or then flooding. again, mm. uh, this is another challenge. They yes. have to find a way to work out. Absolutely. Uh, full of challenges. Uh, the lack of finance, of course, mm. most of the uh, African uh, countries, uh, uh, although being rich, but their resources have been badly yeah, exploited mm. or not exploited at all or exploited by foreign 
occupants and, and what have you. So mm -hmm. it's about time that they look into the inside of their country Absolutely. and work something out to Absolutely. get out of Indeed. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Dr. Rauf Ghaffar, our political analyst and our guest for this afternoon. Thank you very much, sir, for your time and for your insight. And that wraps up today's edition of Africa Today. My name is Angie Mehameni. Thanks for watching.